What up everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with a partial products multiplication lesson. Today we're talking about doing partial products for two and three digit factors by one digit factors, right? So let's split it open and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to solve two and three digit by one digit multiplication problems by understanding how to use the partial products method of multiplication. But before we get to partial products, we have to understand the key concept in partial products multiplication, and that is the distributive property. Okay, So we have a couple lessons on the distributive property um, that you can go back and watch and really what it is and why it works. But basically what we're talking about when we have the distributive property is understanding that when we have a multiplication problem like this, 38 times 4 is really saying 38 groups of four, right? So we're representing that with an array. Now, we don't know our 38 facts, right? If it was seven times four, that'd be pretty easy, but 38 times four, we don't know those basic facts. So what we're able to do with the distributive property is decompose that first factor into 30 groups in eight groups, right? So here we just have it color coded, and you can see we have 30 groups of four and eight groups of four. So in multiplication, right, we're trying to find the total, which we call the product, and the distributive property allows us to split up the array, right, and then you can see it split apart right there, and now we have our 30 groups of four in each and our eight groups of four in each. So now if we find the uh, total of each part, we see 30 groups of four is 120, and eight groups of four is 32, so if we add those back together, we get a total of 152. So 38 times 4 is 152, and we're able to use our distributive property to split that apart, to find partial products and then add them back together. So here we have the exact same problem because that was a great visual of what's actually happening when we do partial products, right? We're using our distributive property to split apart our array into parts and then find the product of each of those to bring them back together, right? Hence the name, partial products. But let's go ahead and the first thing we wanna do, I'm gonna color code it so it matches the visual we just did, is we want to line this up vertically, right? We wanna put our bigger factor on top, our smaller factor on the bottom, make sure our ones place and our tens places lined up because that's gonna make the transition into other ways of multiplication a lot easier. And then just like what we did with the array when you saw it split up, we're gonna have eight groups of four. And I like to put it in parentheses. Sometimes you won't see it in parentheses, but I like to put it in parentheses. And then we're gonna have our 30 groups of four right here, right? And again, you have the 30 and the eight. We decomposed 38 into 30 into eight, just like we did in the visual. And then all we're doing is we're simply just solving the uh, product of each, each of these parts, right? So eight times uh, four is 32. I know three times four is 12, plus my zero is 120, so I'm gonna make sure my place values are lined up. And then all I do is I add these partial products together, and I get the product of 152. So we just showed it to you with the array and visually, and then this is what it looks like mathematically. Now again, if you notice, what I wanna point out is this matches exactly what we just did with that array. We split up the 38 into 30 groups, and eight groups, right? So we use the place values to help us figure that out. And then there are four in each group. So 38 times four gives us a product or a total of 152. So what I wanna do is I wanna name the steps we just did, okay? So you might need to pause the video, write these down in your notes, but our steps for partial products. So the first thing we wanna do, what you saw me do, is line up your factors vertically, okay? That just helps us get into other ways of multiplication later and it'll make that transition easier. Number two, we're gonna use that distributive property to decompose your factors using their place value. So I had a three in the tens place, that's where I got my 30 from. I had an eight in the ones place, that's where I got my eight from, right? Because you're not gonna draw an array all the time. Number three, we multiply all the parts in the bottom factor by all the parts of the top factor, just like we did in our previous problem. And then at the end, we because we're trying to find the product, right, or the total, we have to add all our partial products back together and that will tell us our total or the product of our multiplication problem we're trying to solve. So let's put these steps into action in a we do problem. So here we have seven times 367, okay? So I really have seven groups of 367, but I'm gonna use my commutative property just to go ahead and uh, rewrite this as 367 groups of 
seven, right? So I like to put my bigger factor on top. That just helps me stay organized. My ones place are lined up, and then I don't have anything in my tens or my hundreds for my bottom factor. So now I'm just gonna do seven groups of seven, right? So I'm gonna decompose 367 using the place value. So I have seven groups of seven in each. Then I have 60 groups of seven in each, right? And I'm multiplying all the digits in my top factor by my bottom factor, just like my step said. And then I have 300 groups of seven in each, right? And I was gonna make an array for this, but to make an array with 367 is way too big, right? Uh, but again, we're doing the same thing. We're just decomposing our factors into their place values. I'm using the distributive property to split up my groups. So I have 300 groups of seven, I have 60 groups of seven, and seven groups of seven in each. Now I just solve each of those partial products, that's 49. Seven, uh, 60 times seven is 420, okay? And then 300 times seven would be 21, add my two zeros. And if you notice, I wasn't very neat over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna go ahead and rewrite all of my partial products. So I, when I add, I can make sure that my place values were lined up, right? The hardest part about math is being neat. So if you notice when I'm adding, I'm just making sure that all my place values are lined up properly. Don't wanna do all this work and then miss it because I did something silly. And when I add my partial products back together, I see that the product of seven times 367 is 2,500. 69, okay? So a great way to multiply these bigger numbers is using your partial products strategy. All right, here is our you try problem. So if you're new for Instructor Beats, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pause the video, you're gonna try to work out the problem, and then you're gonna push play to check your understanding. If you don't know how to do it yet, that's okay. You can just use this as another we do problem and write down another example in your notes. So go ahead and pause it and try it and push play when you're ready to check your work. So hopefully you just paused it. And here we have 253 times five. So again, I'm gonna line it up, right? Using my place values. Again, this just helps me transition into the standard algorithm multiplication a little bit easier. And I see that I have 253. I color coded these, right? Just to kind of help you visualize where you're gonna decompose them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have, I'm gonna decompose 253 into 253, right? Just like I did with my array earlier. So I have three groups of five in each, right? And then here's a little bit different color green, but I have 50 groups of five in each. And then my last one is 200 groups of five in each, okay? And sometimes you don't see the parentheses, sometimes you do, right? And math parentheses just helps us know that we're grouping these things together. So it's kind of like splitting that array up visually like we did. You're doing the same thing, but with parentheses. So three groups of five in each is 15. I know that five, 50 groups of five in each would be 250, and I know that 200 groups of five in each would be 1,000, okay? Now, my place values aren't lined up here really well, so I'm gonna go over here, and I'm just gonna make sure that I rewrite my numbers, making sure my place values are lined up starting with my ones place, and then I can add these together, and I see that my uh, partial products added up to a total, or a product of 1,265. So if I had an array with 253 groups of five in each, that would give me a total or a product of 1,265. So our key takeaway for this, right? When we use the partial products method of multiplication, we are really using the distributive property of multiplication to help us break our factors into smaller parts, allowing us to use our basic fact knowledge to help us sol solve large multiplication problems. Thank you so much for checking us out. We know there's lots of different options online. We really appreciate it. Check out our distributive property song. And if you need some more help, check out all our other distributive property lessons. We'd love for you to like, comment, let us know where you're watching from, and please subscribe. We appreciate your support. Thank you again for checking us out. Instruct Beats, out.